ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. I'm Charlene Tan from the Institute of Technical Education, Singapore. So, question is this, what would make our lecturers less overworked? That was the question our school management had at the peak of the pandemic in 2020. So in Singapore, in the year 2020, we had the circuit breaker, which is essentially the lockdown. So during the circuit breaker, everything was brought online. All the teaching and learning tasks were brought online, including marking and grading practice assessment papers. So then it, it gets us thinking, how do we make our lecturers less overworked without compromising the quality of learning? And especially so in the areas of on-screen marking fatigue. Today, in ITE, we are a step closer to solving the two sigma problem in education. So what is the two sigma problem in education, essentially? In 1984, Benjamin Bloom defined these two sigma problems. Right. And it, to today, it remains a very vital, important question in education. So what is the two sigma problem? Why is it a problem in the first place? Yeah? So the research by Benjamin Bloom shows that one-on-one -on -one tutoring led to a two standard deviations improvement in student performance. There are a higher number of students performing better with a better summative assessment results. So that was in 1984 when uh, Benjamin Bloom did this research. So all this thanks to one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So it is proven that one-on-one -on -one tutoring does bring our educational outcome a step higher. So then why is it a problem? It is a problem because one-on-one -on -one tutoring is expensive. And of course, providing an individual tutor to every single learner is not practical. Right? It's not practical in mass education. So then we need to find a solution, perhaps, right? A solution that leverage on human-like AI to deliver a system that is as effective as one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So in ITE, we found possible solution. Meet Walter. Walter is our AI agent and it is our very able teaching assistant. So what, what Walter does is it helps us with marking. And the marking that we are talking about is marking practice assessment papers, right? So what Walter does is it helps us with administering the paper to the students. And so this is the console that the lecturers see. So Walter helps us to assign a question paper, a practice mock paper to the student, to the class. Yeah? So the module lecturers for the particular class has the view of such. So we, as a lecturer, we are kept informed of the students, the score that the student has, that the student got, and this is also marked by water, by the way, which includes multiple choice as well as short answer and structured and answer questions paper. So we get a visibility of the student performance, the score, when they submitted, and of course, we can go into individual questions, what the student has answered, how the marking has been done. So this is an example of what the student got full marks for. And this is marked by Walter, right? By the way, I'm from the School of Business, so this is, is essentially a, a business-driven module. So to the question of what is proactive selling, for example, the recommended answer is from the textbook. And the recommended answer, which is, which is what the frequent marker would mark, right, is according to the text. But since it's a short answer question, the students can write it anyway. So then how does the, the system or the engine mark it the way a human does? So it works with semantics. So here is, you can see, the, the learner got a book right? And the learner need not have to write it specifically the way that the textbook does. So the one highlighted here is what gotten the, the students the marks in the first place. So it has the ability to mark similar meaning, right? Textical semantics, if you call it. So this is the 
it's one example where a student got a full mark, and it's yet another example where a student got a full mark. With every other learner, right? We do not need to write specifically the way that, and it's not possible for us to write exactly the way that the textbook wants us to. So, as a human marker, we see, we read the answers, and we give the marks relevantly. So we train the system to do that as well. But it doesn't always award full marks. So this is an example of where we award just partial marks, and relevantly, why in this is a scenario we have given to the students, right? And based on the answer, what we're looking out for, for example, the, the key answer is that the students, to get the full marks, they need to give this answer, both reactive and proactive selling, for example, and give the explanation why they say so. But for this learner, he has given just one part of the answer, which is both proactive and reactive selling, but he missed out on the explanation why he say so. So the machine gave it just partial marks. And relevantly so if the human marker would have marked, it would have given that particular mark as well. So for the lecturers, what we do is we don't give the whole task to the machine. We check what water has marked, right? So essentially to the to the lecturers, give us a less fatigue, right? We don't have to mark it the first time round, but we do need to go in and check the system if indeed water has marked the way a human marker would. And let's say 70-80% of the time, we do find that so. Right? So this is the teacher's console. From the student's console, students make friends with water and treat water as a private tutor. So what the student sees in, in her phone, his or her phone, and it can be any devices, from a laptop to a PC to a, to a mobile device. So this is what the students see, right? So students can ask water question, and the uh, question related to content, right? And Walter will pick up contents from the textbook and present it to the students. So the students learn it that way, and of course the, the lecturers would have fit the system with the textbook materials prior to that. So the students will read from there, will learn from there, and when they're ready, they attempt the questions. And when they attempt the questions, it's automatically marked almost instantly. In fact, it's instantly marked. So, students will attempt the questions and they get the marks immediately after that. And that is important because they are still in the learning process. So, whatever feedback given to them is, is, is sticks. So, to the students, they look at their marks and they are able to see which question they get it right, which question they get it wrong. And for the wrong questions, Walter is able to suggest which part of the textbook that you should revise on because you got this wrong so to the students they treat Walter is a is an AI tutor for them to the lecturers they are an AI marker for us right? so in ITE we ran a pilot study on this we've been using it for more than a year now and we ran a pilot study on this we monitor the users for nine months and we got about a thousand students uh, to to uh, participate in the survey, 26 classes, and uh, 24 lecturers in the pilot study as well. We chose about four modules, and the modules that we picked were modules that typically has high failure rate, and also modules that is typically challenging for our students to pick up because it's new knowledge to them. We fit the system with about 53 mock question papers. We treat the system how a human marker would mark the papers. So this was the result of the study. About over 80% of the students and the teachers agree that using the AI marking system or AI tutoring system of Walter is effective for them and they will be willing to use it moving forward. Final findings states that about 87% of the students find it effective why they like the idea that directly feedback, if not immediate feedback, is given to them for questions that they got it wrong. And it's really very important for the students because it catch them when they are in their learning process, if they are still very much in their learning process. So they like that idea. It says it's effective for them. And about 84% of the students find it very easy to use. The interface is, is, is no brainer. Yeah? It's easy to use, it's effective, it's useful to them as well. And to the lecturers, the educators, we find myself use this a lot 
I personally find that it saves my marking time to about 75%. 75% time saved for lectures, for myself, right? Where 64% of us agree that it saves our time easy 50% to 75%, if not more. And this time saving, we don't use it for nothing, right? The time saved in otherwise having to mark these, these papers on screen, we reinvest, the lecturers will reinvest it back to other students who needed us more. There are some students who need closer guidance, some needs counselling and stuff like that. So we find that as lecturers with the time save, we could reinvest back to students who needed us more. So as a reflection, if we recall what Skinner said before, right? And this is the 1960s quote, where he says that there needs to be a machine, and that is 60 years ago, there needs to be a machine okay, that effect upon each student like a private tutor that there is a constant interchange between the program and the student which means that the students are willing to use it in our words, right, this engagement, right so, and we should that there should be one system like that and he also says the machine should be like a good tutor to the student that insists that at a given point is thoroughly understood before the student moves on and again, that's 60 years ago when Skinner envisioned for this system to have. And in today's context, we term that as repeat practice, right? I practice till I know it before I move on. And also, Skinner mentioned like there should be a system like a good tutor presents just that material for what the student is ready, which means in bite size, right? And today we call that personalized learning because you and I learn differently. I may be reading in unit one. By unit two, I'm good, but other learners could be unit two weaker than unit one. So we should have a personalized learning, and we see that in Walter as well. And again, Skinner says, like a skillful tutor, the machine should help the student come up with the right answer. Right? And that basically means we don't really get that right the first time, right? Sometimes the students need to re revisit the same question multiple times in order to, to have the stickiness factor, right? In order to remember, in order to reason, in order to know why the answer is the way it is. And lastly, of course, right, the machine, like a private tutor, reinforces the student for every correct response using immediate feedback. And like, I can't say this to make a of but it is very important to get the student at a time where they are still in their learning process. Because right now, what happens in the physical before we, we had this uh, system was we give the paper and then we collect it back and then two days later, finish marking and now uh, we give it back to the, to the students, right? And two days later, you know, I can't even remember what I ate last night. What more two days later, isn't it? So it's important to, to get the immediate feedback for the students. So in summary, right? There need to be a system, and that was envisioned by Skinner 60 years ago. And I think today, especially in ITE, I think we have found a solution, and it could lie with Walter. So Walter could be the answer to help us solve the two sigma problem, because he could be the human-like system of AI to deliver the educational outcome that is as effective as human one-on-one -on -one tutoring. With that, I thank you.